Well, this is the first official chapter of the new year of 2017 outside of the year of Sanji. And there are two main things that this chapter focuses on. One, the full re you know, reunion of Jinbei and uh, Nami and Luffy. So, first off, Luffy's still hungry. That hasn't changed. And we also learn how Matador's books get just, you know, destroyed. Apparently knocking him out's not enough, so they had to set the books on fire, burning Nami and Luffy alive. Luffy, fine. Nami, it's a little harsh. But she I guess she's a straw hat. She survived worse. Nonetheless, they uh you know, take that with stride. And meanwhile, Jimbei's just going down memory lane thinking Huh, didn't we meet in a prison, Luffy? Like, boy, this is not the time for that shit. You, you gotta run. You're in the house of a fucking Yonko. I Meanwhile, he's just nonchalantly like, Oh, yeah, this is why I'm here. I, I'm one of her crew. Well, was. Uh, Nami's like, isn't that rebellion? Like, eh, yeah, it's rebellion, but uh, that's the unfinished business. That being said, given that they said those specific words, it looks like he might technically join the crew the next moment they have to rest. Like, they didn't really get much of a chance to say, but he's more or less part of the crew unofficially at this point. Remember, the Sun Pirates have already given them, given them their, uh, you know, happy... How do I put it? They've given them their... They've given Jinbei their blessing. So he's free to do as as he fucking pleases at the moment. That being said, we still gotta wonder what happened with him in the wheel, but thanks to what we saw in the flashback a couple weeks ago, we know that it's probably just his lifespan being drained if none of his body parts are missing. Will he ever get it back? Probably. I mean, who knows? Big Mom's a bitch, but... Speaking of Big Mom, she wasn't in this chapter at all. Like, I think we got the outside of the building where she and Brooke were having their fight. So, Brooke is still probably going at it with her, and that's... That sounded a lot wronger than I thought. I'm just gonna leave that tidbit alone. And focus on the main part of this chapter. Reiju and Sanji. Now, obviously, these this brother and sister have been you know good from the very beginning they've come. Now, a lot of people said Reiju's great, but she also has those moments, like for example, where she cuffed Sanji's ass with exploding cuffs. Yeah, they don't explode. Reiju is our girl. It's, it's official now. She is our girl. Although she's a little bit on the suicidal department. So, I honestly thought it would play out with Reiju keeping her overwritten memories for a while being. And Sanji would go straight to Luffy. No, that would take away Luffy just pummeling through many of the uh, people in the castle. Instead, Sanji goes straight for his sister, ties up the one person guarding said sister, and the sister basically tells him there's nothing keeping him there. Pudding is a bitch. The cuffs never explode. So, the only reason he's still there is because of the, you know, Beretti, but who's really threatening it? Big Mom? You know, Judge? Or Vito? Who we haven't seen at all. But like I said last uh, review, we don't know what Capone's side of the crew is going to be doing until shit really hits the fan. But, now that Reiju and Sanji have gotten past the idea where, you know, things shouldn't just play out... Although, Vince Mook should die, according to Reiju. Shit really is hitting the fan at this very moment. Big Mom's currently engaged with Brooke in a combat. Uh, Luffy is literally tearing the place up. Jinbei is back on the castle grounds. It's getting worse. Sanji and Reiju are moments away from doing whatever the fuck they feel. But, like I said... So Sanji's got the food. He's probably going to meet up with Luffy soon. Reiju is extremely passive right now. So we might not get to see the Vinsmokes team up with Straw Hats after all. 
considering that Reiju, the only one who absolutely believes him, refuses to do anything and wants to die with her family, minus Sanji, because they deserve it. Now, as I put in yesterday's late review of the previous chapter, the Vince Smokes are bad guys, but they're not the main bad guys, they're more victims. But, as Reiju states, it doesn't change the shit they did. Hell, it doesn't change the shit she did. She, while still having her emotions, is still programmed to obey her father's orders. Not that she didn't at least, you know, switch out the cuffs beforehand. Actually, that's a brilliant idea. She knew that he'd order her to put cuffs, and she switched the cuffs out way beforehand. That's neat. But, nitty gritty aside, let's go back to what I said about emotions. Like, Rage, you still has them, but her brothers, except for Sanji, don't. Why is that? Remember the lineage factor thing that we talked about way back? Well, for starters, it seems they had to do the modification inside the mother's womb. And Mama Vinsmoke didn't take kindly. This is why I called the video, you know, put that little bold title as the women of Vinsmoke. Not just because of Reiju being the best and standing out in this chapter, but because her flashback and revelation shows that her mother was the same in the fact that she did not want her her children to be mindless killing machines. And it also sets the stage for, let's see, Re the fact that Reiju is officially the oldest Vinsmoke. And on top of that, we have it where the others, all of Sanji's other brothers, are not older or younger. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe they were named on the order they got taken out of the womb, but they're quintuplets. They're quintuplets. They're not you know, older, blah, 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 and all the other shit. They're quintuplets of the same exact age. So no matter how much more mature some look than others, versus how immature Yanji looks compared to Sanji, they're all the same age. So there's no really younger or older, per se. Just their names. That's it. That's it. But on top of that, they're really... really strong. I don't know why I said that. Oh, they're all emotionless, except for Sanji. The mother took a drug that tried to mess with the lineage factor. While there might not be an effect on the other three, it had the effect of keeping Sanji's memories. Not memories, emotions. Had it. So now that Sanji still has his emotions, he feels, he loves... I mean, we know he's full of emotion. It's one of his things. So, for it to be put in a more meaningful way, I like that. I mean, Oda's really kicking it off right now. Like, everything's setting in motion sl slowly but surely. And not as slowly as before. The pacing has gotten faster, but not in a bad way. It's, it's good. Like, I wasn't complaining about the first half of this arc's pacing. Like, I liked it. It gave us exactly what we needed. And I look forward to the next ones. Like, seriously. I'm trying to think if there was anything else in this chapter, but no. It was just the Vin Smokes and Jinbei. Because I know I forget shit sometimes. But no, that chapter was absolutely perfect. If you disagree, just tell me in the comments below. Don't put a dislike. That shit's rebellious, man. Man. And if you guys haven't seen the previous one, which a lot probably haven't because I just posted it last night, go look at the previous review. And I ain't got much else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this entire video. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Actually, for anyone who likes gaming, I'm releasing a playthrough of Warframe as well. So check those out if you have a have the time or chance to. So, Smalls of Black 94 signing out. See you guys next time. Like, comment, subscribe, motherfuckers.